the house of love. Here is what Brenda writes. I am going through a bad breakup. To make things worse, my ex just moved into his mom's home on the other side of an open lot, next door. I want to get over the hurt. We were together for 12 years, and though not technically married, we have a daughter together. I want to forget about him and forgive him, to let go of the hurt. I have never met Brenda in person, and I know nothing else about her, but her words remind me of a painful breakup I went through a few years ago. The pain of it was palpable, as is the pain behind the words she writes. When I tune in, the first thing that comes up is her heart chakra, connected to speaking her truth. The heartbreak she is feeling is not just or even primarily about her ex. I get the sense that there's a deeper pain. The one that she is feeling and unable to release has to do with the ways she wasn't able to fully speak her truth or get her own needs met in that relationship. The ex touched on and poked and deepened a wound that was already there. To heal the wound and make the pain of it go away, she needs to learn how to ask for what she truly needs and to know that she is capable of giving the love she gave to him to herself as well. There were some other parts of the healing as well, involving clearing her chakras of old energies and downloading new energies of love and fulfillment to rewrite old childhood and environmental programming. As I was doing the healing, I thought about how hard it would be to live within sight of your ex and also create a new life. If only she could build a wall so as not to see him. Spirit interrupted, not a wall. She needs to build a new house for herself. I asked for clarification. She needs to create a new energetic house for herself to live in, a place where she can imagine and begin living her new life, where she gets to practice her new ways of being. The house that she needed to build herself is an energetic house, a house in another dimension. When you fully step into a new reality, the old reality and the power that it once held on you lessens. You aren't that person anymore. If someone, say her ex, were to treat her as the person that she was, it wouldn't have the same impact because he's talking about someone that only exists in his mind. Imagine someone in the past who really pushed your buttons. They might not have changed. They probably still push your buttons or try to. But if you have moved on, you are no longer in a place where those buttons can be pushed. They can try to push them, but the buttons aren't there. The person is in a different dimension, a different place, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. So the question is, how does Brenda or anyone get to that new place? Pain often anchors you to the wound. When your heart is hurting, there's a temptation to go back and try to fix the problem, or in the case of a relationship, to try to fix it by returning to the way things were before. But there is no returning to what was unless you are willing to be who you once were. Change is always a force for growth. You can try to stop growth, but the price you pay is stagnation and slow death. How can she create this new house, I ask my guides. Here comes the homework. I often give homework, which is optional, but I am always delighted when people actually do it. Brenda's homework, I am told, is to create an altar. The first step to creating a new reality, that is, to anchor an unseen yet to be constructed reality, involves creating an altar. People use altars for many different purposes, 
to remember and honor the ancestors, to connect to the elements and spirit worlds, and to anchor new realities. The pain Brenda feels is useful. What hurts the most often points to missing qualities she needs to bring forth to heal the deep wound of feeling unloved and unworthy of love. As I am picturing it, her altar is like a 3D vision board where she places objects that symbolize a new relationship and a new way of being, one where she is loved, respected, and encouraged. The part of her that knows how to love another person needs to turn her attention and focus on loving herself. The altar is the first step in new practices. It's as if she needs to learn how to put her arms around herself, to wrap herself in a warm blanket and say to herself, Honey, I know you had a hard time. I'm so, so sorry. I love you. I'm listening, and I'm here for you. You are precious to me, and I'm going to take my time to do whatever it takes until you know just how loved you truly are. I've heard it said that love is a verb. It's how you treat yourself among others. And to learn how to treat yourself well, if you haven't been treated well by others, is uncomfortable because unfamiliar. In small ways, in small acts of care and self-kindness, combined with the intention to create a new house, a new reality for herself, Brenda will move on but also move into new love. That is my intention and hope for Brenda. Often at the end of a reading, I pull a card. This one is from Tosha Silver's Change Me Prayers Oracle, and it seemed particularly fitting. The title of the card is Openness. And here's what it says. I invite you, divine, to move through me. Let me feel unbridled openness to the new. May the highest unfold in all ways. I release all fear. I'm Suzanne Legrand, and you've been listening to The Shaman's Notebook. For more insights and adventures into healing, subscribe below and visit me at SuzanneLegrand.com.